Hi, uh, this is Saif Abu Talib with you. Um, I am a BLS instructor and ACLS instructor from the American Heart Association. Uh, today, I will be going to talk to you uh, about uh, victims that who lost response, how to deal with them in the right way. So today's video is in cooperation with the Center of Continuing Education of uh, Kuwait Technical College. Uh, simply, before we start, I will uh, just uh, tell you some of facts. Around 80% of uh, incidents that uh, who loses response happening outside of the hospital, where really they need help. In hospital, it's much more easier. The facilities are there, the expertise are there, and they can take action, action quickly. However, outside, we have to be educated and we have to have the uh, right awareness in terms of dealing with such cases. That's number one. Then, uh, according to researchers, if there is somebody who lost response and his heart suddenly stops, uh, every minute goes without uh, doing uh, what we call PLS or CPR, uh, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Every minute goes without this CPR, we lose from the survival uh, rate between 7 to 10 percent, which is high percentage. So uh, imagine if there is someone fell down in the ground and we are just watching him. We did not even activate the emergency response system. We did not interfere to help him. His heart stops. As we said, every one minute we lose from the survival rate between 7 to 10 percent. So 10 minutes passed, that's it, enough. We, can, we can't bring him back. So the soon you react and the right, on the right way, the good chance of survival. It can be even tripled, doubled or tripled. It is very high percentage. So what are these steps? Let's come back in the beginning. First, you saw someone lost response, fell down in the ground. So first of all, you have to think about safety. Safety for yourself, safety for the people around, the, people around him, then safety for the victim. Ask yourself this question. Am I able to give help to this victim? I am, am I strong enough? Is the scene, the scene is uh, safe? Uh, do I will cause uh, any harm for myself or for others? Or him, the victim himself, in any hazards, hazardous situation? If yes, you can take him to safe place. If the, everything is safe, you can go forward to the next step. So, someone on the floor, you have to start with the checking responsiveness. Checking responsiveness always by tapping shoulders of the victim. You can shout at him, call him by his or her name if you know them. Otherwise, anything, say or something like this. If he is respond, responding, he will react back to you. If he's not, you have to move directly to the next step, which is activating the emergency response system as soon as possible because from this time you are fighting with the time from this moment you are fighting with the time the time is very crucial as we said based on the previous researches the better the or the sooner the advanced help comes the better the survival rate will be then i am now standing on bifurcation of two roads either this victim his heart is not working so he needs CPR, or in the other way around, maybe he has so many other problems, or one of so many other problems, we call them first aid precaution. If sugar of this patient went down, hypoglycemic, he will lose response. If he has a bleeding, severe bleeding, he might lose response as well. Also, some kind of uh, fit, like epilepsy, he might lose response. So many other reasons, we call it first aid precaution. Let's talk about this one first. If we, if, the, if this victim has a breathing, so I have to check him from head to toe to examine his body, to dig out what is the exact problem do, we, who, do he have or he might have. I check also some of the victims like who have permanent diseases, they have some leads that tell you that he have or he ha or she has this uh, this thing. For example, diabetes mellitus or uh, some kind of epilepsy, some patients, or if he has pacemaker, they have sometimes, they are wearing some jewelries to tell you uh, what uh, about their conditions. Most probably these conditions will be the reason for them to be 
uh, losing response. Uh, if he has pacemaker as well, if you just look in his chest, examine his chest, you can see maybe a notch. Maybe most of the time, if he lost response, it will be because of uh, this device. So check him from head to toe to make a quick evaluation about uh, this victim. Once, as soon as the uh, emergency response team comes, you can give them this brief evaluation and it will help really to find out the problem and treat it quickly, okay? Let's go back. What if this patient, his heart is not working or he's, he's, he doesn't breathe? Usually, if the patient uh, heart stops, also the breathing will stop, okay? So, if so, you have to start with what we call CPR cardiopulmonary resuscitation. You have to uh, give support to the heart by doing chest compressions, high quality chest compressions, as well as giving breaths, supporting the lungs by giving breaths. For the chest compression, you need to press the lower part of the center of the chest for a continuing of uh, compressions between 100 to 120 compressions per minute, okay? Uh, with depth of like five centimeter and complete chest recoil. You have to go back to the zero lever where you have started the compressions every time. You can do them into intervals, 30 compressions with two breaths. Two breaths you can give them in two seconds. Enough, you, you can give them mouth, the breath by mouth to mouth breaths. Close the nose, put the head to the pack, then blow some air to the lung, just enough to see chest rise, which is we're great. Every breath in one second, two breaths is enough. Okay? Every time you have to see chest rise. So, uh, somebody brought the AAD to you. The AAD is an automated external defibrillator. It is uh, a device has uh, audible commands. You just need to turn on this device and follow these commands. It will lead you for what you have to do next. Power on, put the patch, follow the instructions then the device will tell you after analyzing the patient whether he needs to have shock or no. Follow these instructions and really it will help in impacting survival. Make sure that these are simple steps, but if you apply them, you can really impact the survival, which is really great. Make sure that saving life is very important. You know, you don't know, you might be having emergency situation at any time. And if you know these steps and if you follow this instruction, you don't know. One day you may be, be a reason to help saving life of someone somewhere, which is really more worthy than anything else in the world. Thank you very much.